So a uh, very warm evening to all of you on a very warm day. Uh, so uh, those of you who are, if I request you to take a moment to check if you're not on mute yet, please do mute yourself now uh, until probably the Q&A session or the fellowship later. Uh, do keep your video on throughout the session and make sure you are signed in with your proper name. Uh, that would be wonderful so that people can get to know you and put a name to the face, especially a lot of the newer people. Uh, mm -hmm. This session is going to be recorded uh, for the club's record keeping as well as for use, possible use on social media, etc. And by participating, we do consider this as your consent to allow that. Uh, there is a chat feature which you can use to chat with either everybody or individuals that you select and do use that judiciously. Uh, and especially please use that during the speaker session. You can use the chat function to ask your questions in advance and then you will get called out uh, to, to ask those questions to the speaker in person uh, later on so that that avoids the queuing situation. Uh, and do please stay tuned in in the meeting throughout. Uh, it would really help our people at the back end if you are not moving in and out. Uh, it, it does improve the logistics a lot. Uh, with that, a warm welcome again. And Bridget, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny. Really. Thank you, Vinny. 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 Thank it's uh, 7.07 p.m. And I would like to call our 33rd club meeting to order. Honorary members, past presidents, distinguished guests, prospective members, fellow Rotarians, I warmly welcome you to our 33rd meeting of this Rotary year. I have, I have seen many, many prospective members today. Uh, I'm not taking your names, but I warmly welcome you. And I'm sure our past, our vice president, Suresh Keith, he must be in touch with you. And he, he is welcoming you in addition. And look forward to joining our club. We don't, our speaker is not here yet, His Excellency. He is here. He is here. He is here. He is here. Yes, he is here. Right. So I would like to welcome His Excellency William Hodgman, Australian High Commissioner to Singapore, and he will be speaking to us later. Thank you, His Excellency, for accepting our invitation to speak this evening. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Today's meeting, we have some important announcements. Our Kaifer will be back after a gap. We have an induction today. And then finally, we'll have this speech from His Excellency. It's now my pleasure to call Rotarian Tom to raise the toast for Rotary International. Rotary and Tom, please. Uh, dear President uh, Dinesh, Honorary Secretary uh, Bridget, fellow Rotarians, it's my honor today to raise a toast. Um, fellow Rotarians, please join me in a toast to the most prestigious club with targets to make the world a better place for all, to Rotary, to Rotary International. The Rotary, Rotary International. International. Thank you, Tom. And I'll share my slides now. Well, I'll call upon our honorary secretary for clubs announcements, please. Uh, yes, thank you, President. Um, I have actually two announcements. One is tomorrow, Thursday, the 11th of March, Dr. Chan is hosting the Vocational Services Committee meeting virtual on Zoom at 7 o'clock. I'm sure he will be sending out the login uh, details to the committee and uh, to the club soon. Uh, and Rotarian Utam actually reminded me uh, to remind you 
that the Kia's Meta uh, essay competition was launched actually last week. President made the announcement. And uh, all interactors are actually invited uh, to contribute uh, an essay uh, on world peace and understanding. Wotarin Utam is the chairman of this initiative. And uh, the deadline for, uh, uh, for contributions is the 31st of March. So I think we need, we need some traction. And he asked me to kind of remind uh, you and the youth service committee in particular uh, to encourage the inter uh, interactors to sit down and write an essay. That's it for me. Thank you, Bridget. And thank you, Tom. No birthday celebrants this week. But yes, today we have a wedding anniversary of uh, Dr. Lipke and Rachel. Uh, oh. Is he, I did not see him. Uh, no, he's not here. I did wish him and he's having dinner with his family. And he said he might drop in for a few minutes, but I don't see him. So let's, uh, and then we have Bharat and Alka on 13th of March, Frederick and Karwai on 16th of March. Please join, him, join me in wishing very happy wedding anniversary to all the celebrants. Well, I have, some announcements and uh, the first one is fellow Rotarians. On last Thursday, 4th of, uh, 4th of March, I received a mail with an attached letter, which was a resignation letter from president elect she see me Lee is stating her resignation from the position of president elect and hence president for the year 2021-22 with immediate effect. The reason stated in the letter is due to unforeseen family issues and she is required to return home and home is uh, Malaysia. In view of very limited time left for installation of next president and PETS, which is president elects training, being mandatory is also around the corner. We had to act fast to fill the position. As a natural consequence, I approached president nominee, Louis Lim, and explained the reason of my call. And I asked him if he was ready to take the position of president elect and president from July 1st. It was an example of Rotary spirit exhibited by Rotarian Lewis and he accepted if given the opportunity. As he said, the show must go on. <laughs> And that was in the interest of our club. I called the emergency meeting of the board and the board resolution was passed. The board resolution to fill the vacant position of president elect for the year, Rotary year 2020-21 with Rotarian Louis Lim. And this is in reference to the club bylaws article one, section three, and the resolution passed is as president-elect, Rotarian Mili resigned from our position as uh, president-elect due to personal reasons. It is resolved by the board to fill the vacant position with Rotarian Louis Lim. Rotarian Louis Lim has given his consent. Fellow Rotarians, may I have your consent to consent. Consent. Yeah. Consent. Yeah. Consent. 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 Yes. No objections. No objection. No objection. No objection. <laughs> it sounds like on <laughs> Consent. Consent. <laughs> 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 
Good Thank one. Thank you. Good one, Jess. Unanimous, <laughs> unanimous vote of thanks. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, Rotary and Luis team. I, do, I did talk Thank to many of uh, very senior Rotarians, and uh, everyone said yes and, and asked me to convey to Louis Lim their full support. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, President of Rotary Club of Singapore for year 2021-2022 is Rotarian Louis Lim, President-elect 2020-21 with immediate effect, and he will be the President 2021-2022. Louis Lim is here, and uh, so President-elect, Rotarian Louis Lim, thank you so much for accepting this coveted position of next president of the oldest and the largest Rotary Club in the district. Thank May you, I president ask Dinesh. all members to give full support to oh. our new president elect, Louis Lim. Yeah. Congratulations. 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 All our support. Thank you. Thank you. The support is much needed. <laughs> I, I don't have a runway. I have a road to cross on it. <laughs> Louis, I think so you have your off. photo. <laughs> <laughs> he, he already has the presidential background today, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I say Washington, D.C. <laughs> yes. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Louis. President-elect Louis Lim, thank you very much for accepting and uh, let's move on. I would like to just give uh, an update to our major project 2020-2021 for this year's major project, which is a uh, happy rotary kitchen to willing hearts. And I think we had in one of our meeting explained in detail uh, about this uh, project and our project lead is Dr. Chan and he explained to all of you and it was agreed. So I just would like to give you some uh, update. Uh, on 9th of uh, March, on Tuesday morning, uh, that was only yesterday, we had, uh, we signed an MOU with Billing Hearts. There was a little delay because they had yet to sign the lease with the government for the new building where central kitchen and other facilities will be built. And that has been done. And we clarified everything and the project moves on. And here we'll see the founder, uh, Tony Tay, exchanging the MOU with the president, me. And we, had, we have here uh, our Rotarian Tom and the chair of the major project, Dr. Chan, and Subhash. And here is Teng uh, and Tony Te. So we did this and we are moving ahead and very soon uh, we will start the fundraising. And for that, I think I'll speak in the next meeting and we will be sending an email to all the members with the details of the major project. Thank you. It's again my great pleasure to induct a new member today. And the new member is Sean Lim Wiki. And uh, here, I would, I would call upon our Vice President membership, Suresh Kirti, to introduce the new member. <coughs> Vice President Suresh, please. Thank you, President. It's my pleasure again to introduce another candidate for induction today. It's uh, Wee Ki Lim. To friends, he's known as Sean Lim. Rotarian Rajiv Mukul and I have known him for over 25 years. He's a Malaysian Singaporean PR. He started his life in 1990 as a technology trainer and for 15, within 15 years, he was the marketing head for a listed education institution in Singapore covering 35 countries. Later, he saw opportunities in cybersecurity 
And the last 15 years, he's been currently working as a COO and a chief revenue officer for EC Council, which is one of the global largest cybersecurity certification institute. And he manages the revenue in 120 countries. I present, and he, besides work, he, he and his wife, Michelle, they love cycling, deep sea fishing, playing badminton, gaming, photography. More than that, he's an avid cook and a good baker. And I told him to invite some of our Rotarians for dinner with him. Thank you. Thank you, Vipi Suresh. Fellow Rotarians, it is my privilege and pleasure today to welcome our new member to the membership of our club, Mr. Sean Lim Wee The proposal has been reviewed in accordance with the constitution and bylaws of the club. Sean, as you would like to be known in the club, we now proceed to admit you into membership in the Rotary Club of Singapore. We have, you have been chosen for membership in this club because your fellow members believe in you to be a leader in your field. Mark has Yong Yu Kin, but my picture is not there. And have qualities which will allow you to carry out the work of Rotarian. In electing you to the membership, we are doing more than taking you into our fellowship. We are making you a trustee with us of Rotary's ideals, knowing you to be a Rotarian, the world will henceforth judge Rotary by your conduct. Membership in Rotary is an honor and privilege. Every privilege has its corresponding obligations. You have agreed to accept the responsibilities attached to your membership in this club and to obey this club's constitution and bylaws. One of the special obligation of the membership is regular attendance of the weekly meetings and monthly service committee meetings and participation in club projects and activities. It is the primary method of fulfilling the principles of service and fellowship and the way by which you represent your vocation. Sean, the ideal of Rotary is service. Our principal motto is service above self. And the object of this club and all Rotary clubs is to encourage and foster this ideal as a basis of worthy enterprise you are to share in this effort. For the rest of this Rotary year, Sean, I would be pleased if you would serve on the community service <coughs> committee. You may join other service committees as well. Your mentor is past president Stan Lowe. Your, your mentor will guide your assimilation through the service committee. Your classification is learning and development cyber security. Sean, as you represent a classification, it is your duty to tell us about your yeah. vocation and to bring the ideas of Rotary to your business and profession. And now, by the power vested in me as a president of the Rotary Club of Singapore, I declare you to be an active member of this Rotary Club. I'll present you with a Rotary emblem and a packet of the Rotary literature very soon, along with other recently inducted members. I especially commend to your attention the object of Rotary and the four-way test, which form the criteria for Rotarian in, this, in their daily lives. I also suggest that as you travel, you avail yourself of the extraordinary opportunity you will have to attend Rotary meetings and meet Rotarians throughout the world. This is another extremely rewarding benefit of your membership. Fellow Rotarians, I'm happy to present to you Rotarian Sean, our newest member. Let us welcome Sean to the oldest Rotary Club in the District 3310, the Rotary Club of Singapore. Please unmute and welcome Rot Rotarian Sean with a round of applause. Welcome, Sean. Welcome, Sean. Welcome, Sean. This is Tapan. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, get your knees up and running. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> yes, sir. Welcome, I'll do welcome. that. Thank you. Welcome. welcome. Welcome to the Rotary. We all look forward to your enrichment of our lives as well. Thank you, President Dinesh. That of your own. Thank you. By your association in this, the world's oldest, largest, and finest service organization. I would now like to invite Rotarian Sean to briefly address the club. Rotarian 
Sean, please. Unmute yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is indeed my pleasure to be uh, admitted to such a prestigious club. Uh, in such a short period of time, you know, I've gotten to know past President Stan Lowe, you know, uh, at, you know, someone that uh, you know, I've, I've gotten to admire in a short period of time, had a chance to speak to another past president today, Sajjad. And obviously, I've been seeing uh, many of the, uh, you know, the uh, executives in action over the last couple of calls that I've joined. So I'm excited because my whole life, I've been uh, dedicated to mentoring, coaching, training, education, you know, building a future for a lot of people in, uh, you know, countries around the world. So I stand ready to serve and, uh, you know, I'll be uh, at the service of the Rotary Club. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank, thank you, Sean. Sean. Thank you, Sean. I, now it's the guy for time. And today, we have our one of the very new Rotarian. I just put the gallery view, and he's right in front of me, Allard Noy. Allard joined on 2nd of December, 2020, last year, 2nd of December. And he's CEO of uh, Infraco Asia Development, Private Limited. Due to restriction, I always have very limited uh, time to, to meet our new members, but I did for a short while. And I was so impressed with what the kind of work he has been doing. So I think let him speak about himself. Rotarian Allard, please. Thank you very much, uh, President Dinesh. And uh, good evening, everyone. I am having a few slides. Can you see this now? Yes. Yeah, now you need to okay. click on the slide yeah. and then never give up. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Technology is always, you know. And, and it's my great pleasure to, uh, to give him the opportunity uh, for, for you to get, me, uh, to get to know me a little better uh, tonight through the Kyver. So let me first start with a couple of first boring slides with a lot of text and then move to images. So I started my career after graduation uh, with a Dutch uh, multinational company called Holic International. It's now part of the Eaton Group. And uh, I started my career in a... Um, uh, a management trainee program uh, which was specifically designed uh, to get fresh graduates in every six months, different job guaranteed for two years. And guess what? After uh, 12 months, I landed up in Nigeria. I, in 1994, um, I moved to Asia and I haven't left this part of the world ever since. I was based in Vietnam as country manager for Familiar Contractors Group and then Balas Nidam. Uh, mainly active in uh, the uh, wa water and sanitation uh, sectors. Um, in 2000, we moved to Hong Kong uh, and I joined Thameswood International as the regional head for Greater China. I then had a few years, four years with the Leighton Group in Asia as uh, the director for infrastructure investments and the director of China and then we moved to Shanghai, uh, joining Convent Energy, the world's largest waste to energy company, looking after uh, the, uh, the Asia Pacific region. Um, in India, uh, CEO of Jindal ITF, uh, part of the Jindal Group, and um, uh, responsible as CEO for Jindal Ecopolis, the waste management, the waste management and uh, renewable energy business and uh, Jindal Aquasource, the water and the wastewater business. And then since 2013, I've been based here in Singapore. Uh, quick background on my uh, education. Uh, first degree in electrical engineering, then did a undergrad in engineering management, followed by an MBA in international business, followed by a couple of advanced finance and advanced leadership uh, core, uh, uh, programs. Um, the, um, sorry, uh, let me just go back. So where has work taken me? Uh, both Africa, the Middle East, Asia, North and Latin America, but uh, I've uh, predominantly lived in Asia, but traveled to 50 plus countries and, uh, and where I lived, uh, the Netherlands, where I was born and raised, uh, Vietnam, mainland China, Hong Kong, 
and, uh, and uh, uh, Singapore, as well as New Delhi. Uh, my interests are around um, cooking and organizing gourmet dinners. Um, that, uh, oh. that really relaxes me. So coming back to the previous sort of suggestion, uh, at least eight uh, Rotary members would be welcome given the uh, current restrictions. Uh, international travel, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, I play tennis together with my wife at the Bridge Club on a very regular basis. Uh, and then uh, I enjoy playing golf, swimming. Um, I used to be a competitive uh, offshore sailing um, uh, when we lived in Hong Kong, sailed to uh, the Philippines a couple of times uh, in races, as well as South China Sea races, um, skiing, um, Villa Bana San, I'll come back to that in a minute. That's a, a, a project which uh, my wife Anne and I did build in, uh, on the island of Koh Samui in, uh, in, uh, in Thailand. And uh, then during the spare free time, apart from being active in Rotary, I'm also a board member of the International Project Finance Association headquartered in London and co-chairman of the uh, Bridgem uh, Singapore Energy and Utilities Committee. So that is sort of the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the slide uh, which uh, provides uh, you with an executive summary on that. Uh, starting off in Vietnam, in fact, my wife and I met in Vietnam, despite the fact that we were both Dutch. Uh, we got married by the Dutch ambassador in Hanoi uh, and did uh, both a, a wedding ceremony in Hanoi as well as in, in Ho Chi Minh City. And the picture, which is in the center bottom, is actually a painting where every uh, uh, guest, which was on a, on a Chinese junk uh, floating over the Saigon River, had to paint in their own, uh, their own faces. Um, the, um, after uh, Vietnam, we were based in, um, uh, in Hong Kong. I was appointed as regional head for uh, uh, Thames Water International. Uh, for both Taiwan, Hong Kong, as well as mainland China. We, uh, we lived in uh, beautiful places across Repulse Bay, uh, as well as uh, in Century Tower. And this is an image of the Century Tower apartment on uh, Trugenta Pass. Um, and, and that was the view. Uh, while at Thames Water, uh, we, uh, we did a number of uh, M&A deals. So we acquired uh, six, seven uh, water and wastewater uh, previously state-owned enterprises in mainland China. And this was one of the signing ceremonies to highlight that point. Moving to Shanghai, where I run Coventa Energy as president for the Asia Pacific region, Coventa Energy, for the ones who don't know that, is listed on the New York Stock Exchange and is uh, the world's largest waste to energy company. Um, so this uh, on the bottom left uh, was the team which we built in Shanghai uh, from scratch, uh, which, uh, which we did after closing the regional headquarters in, uh, in, in Bangkok. And then uh, we did um, a couple of celebrations. So the first uh, Chinese New Year celebration was in the theme of Shanghai Night, uh, which is on the top uh, right-hand side on the slide. Um, and here on the left-hand side, that's my, uh, my wife. We, we were all themed dressed. So as we are both Dutch, she was dressed in orange and I was dressed in accordance with the Dutch flag. So uh, uh, red, white, and, and blue. And then the second, uh, the, the year thereafter, we did uh, a Hollywood, not a Bollywood, but a Hollywood theme party. In New Delhi, uh, I was CEO of General Ecopolis, uh, responsible for the very first large-scale waste-to-energy project in a public-private partnership with the New Delhi government, uh, responsible for getting that off the ground, getting it financed and getting it built, and then being invited by then Chief Minister Moody in Gujarat to speak at uh, the vibrant Gujarat events. The, um, the bottom pictures are here at the coming in the first waste through the gate at the uh, waste to energy facility, as well as the sorting facility on the bottom, the bottom right. Uh, and again, vibrant Gujarat, uh, which uh, then Chief Minister Modi and now uh, um, uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, has driven uh, uh, to basically link the public and the private sector. In Singapore, uh, appointed as uh, a CEO of uh, Infraco Asia back in 2013. I was employee number two. Uh, that is uh, sort of now history. 
uh, given uh, the top right uh, picture that was taken in uh, 2014, 15, where we had grown the team substantially. And more recently, uh, we moved to Manilaf Tower uh, uh, expansion. The, the picture on the left-hand side is one of the infrastructure round tables, which we organize. And, uh, and that's for industry specialists, as well as uh, the public sector. Uh, the lady in pink on the right-hand side in that picture is uh, Amy Lee, and uh, she is uh, uh, she's a member of the board of directors at Infraco Asia. And again, you see her here in the center, including um, John Walker, uh, the former uh, uh, chairman of Macquarie Capital in Asia, as well as uh, Clive Turton. And more recently, we did on, uh, offline or online events uh, rather than in person. So the top right uh, picture shows me at, um, at SMU, where I teach a part-time, uh, that is as a lecturer, uh, a public-private partnership program. And more recently, I did an, uh, a session uh, as part of a panel for digital infrastructure in Asia with The Economist. Um, picture on the left, that's where we live. Uh, so uh, an, a lovely 1930 conservation house in the center. Team building is an important part of um, the, uh, my life. And uh, you see uh, a part of my executive management team uh, here at a Thai kickboxing um, uh, event. And the bottom picture is uh, again, one of the teaching sessions uh, which I do at, uh, at uh, SMU. The company which I run is, a, uh, is an impact investment uh, 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 company. So we, um, we look at social and economic impact as far as our infrastructure development uh, activities and investments. We are complementing to the private sector. We don't compete with the private sector. We basically take very early stage development risk, but we need to be commercially viable as we are not an asset owner for the next uh, 25 years. We're operating in 12 countries, only lower and lower middle income countries, and that's all to do with developing impact. Uh, so from, uh, from left to right, uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia, 12 countries in total. And we work with development, co-development partners and joint venture partners. So um, uh, uh, actually two Singapore-based companies, we've both taken them into Vietnam, one for a water concession and one for the very first utility scale solar project. So that was in joint venture with, with Sunship. We're also active in Myanmar and that obviously uh, is currently taking much of our intention. We've got 15 people on the ground and millions, millions invested. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're sort of in crisis management mode. Let me move to one of our hobbies, and that's, uh, that's Bana San. Uh, it is uh, a, a house on the island of Koh Samui. It's a beachfront. And uh, my wife and I committed to develop this. This was um, land which had never been lived on, um, uh, full of palm trees and, uh, and right on the beach. And uh, part of the infrastructure development which had taken place was actually building an overhead line to get, water, uh, to get power to the site as well as building, building a road. Um, the pictures here in the center were sort of uh, uh, the, uh, the area where we did that commitment back in, uh, in 2004, 2005. And obviously in accordance with Thai, uh, Thai, uh, Thai traditions, we had the monks uh, doing the blessings for the construction of that, uh, of that property. Uh, again, a mixture of pictures uh, pre and, and post starting construction. And this is how it looks today. So if you're looking at the left hand, right uh, uh, top, um, corner that's uh, the main house three stories and then four individual units uh, right in front of us a little but bit i'm about... so sorry but you're really taking a lot of time you, can you speed up a bit we are all uh, waiting for the speaker i'm really sorry i mean we have I've got i've got four slides left i think Bridget. please i mean um, it's, you're really so, so uh, family and friends so uh, despite the fact that Anne and i don't have kids we have actually got uh, children so uh, this is our uh, our uh, God's uh, daughter. Uh, we organize um, uh, every year at, uh, in, on the island of Koh Samui, and you see probably a familiar face there in the center in red, that is Carlo. Uh, uh, we, we organize uh, parties uh, for a number of days in uh, accordance with teams. Um, 
picture here on the left is um, a gift giving program which we did in the Philippines on one of our investments, as well as an, um, uh, uh, a round table, uh, chef's table uh, dinner in, um, in Hong Kong. Uh, travel in terms of, uh, we've been around the world, Antarctica, uh, Mali, uh, flying around in, in the US, sailing around Cape Good Hope in, um, in, uh, in South Africa, uh, Panama Canal, uh, Nicaragua and Guatemala, and uh, skiing in Japan, as you can tell. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Very good presentation. Very good. A lot. You have to unmute, President. President, you have to unmute. Thank you, Parlita. PP Parlita, yes. Thank you, Alard. And what I said is you bring a lot of value to our club. And uh, especially in uh, ESG. Uh, okay, I, uh, let's, I think we have to move. As uh, Bridget said, there is a... We, we are waiting. Can you stop sharing screen, Alad, please? I yeah. think I did that. No, that's fine. No, yeah. we have thank you very much. Thank you. One second. All right, this is now speaker time. And uh, I'm very, I would like to welcome His Excellency, Mr. William Hushman, Australian High Commissioner to Singapore. And the topic is priorities of the Australian High Commission to Singapore. And now I would call upon our Honorary Secretary, Bridget, to introduce our speaker. Bridget, please. Yes, thank you, President. I will make it very brief. So we've waited quite uh, a long time for, uh, for Will to come on. So it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce the Honorable William Hodgman, the Australian High Commissioner, uh, Commissioner to Singapore. And as we exchange emails, uh, and he signed off with Will, so Will, I, I hope you allow me to address you, Will, in the casual sort of Australian way. So Will is an Australian politician through and through, and uh, he is in his role as Australian High Commissioner to Singapore since the 9th of February 2021. So that's almost to the dot a month now. And uh, he served in the Parliament of Tasmania from 2002 until 2020, where he held various ministerial positions. Amongst that also, he was the state's 45th premier between 2014 and 2020. Will was born and bred in Tasmania. Uh, he holds a Bachelor of Arts uh, and a Bachelor of Laws from the University of Tasmania. And uh, as I know, he is married to Nicole and they have two sons and one daughter. And now, please, honor the Honorable William Hodgman. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President um, and Secretary Bridget, thank you very much, and members indeed, for the opportunity to, to meet with you tonight. Um, it's very rare that I would ever refuse an invitation from a Rotary Club uh, wherever I've been, because I have a strong um, belief that service clubs such as yours play such an important role in communities right across the world, and certainly in the state of Tasmania and across Australia, uh, they are very important ways that people have over difficult times in uh, the last year or so, but over many, many uh, generations brought people together and provided great benefits to those communities they represent. So not only do I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to speak with you tonight and to hear from you, but also to thank you for your service to this community in which I now live. I've been here uh, for two months, um, and as Bridget said, officially installed as Australia's new High Commissioner uh, a month or so ago, and um, I've been... Uh, very, very, uh, I've very much enjoyed, I should say, as has my wife, uh, Nicola, and our daughter, Lily, um, living in Singapore for a short time. We've left behind two sons, um, one starting his second year of university in Melbourne and one in his final year of school in Tasmania. So it was important he uh, clearly finished his education, but um, I'm sure... At some point, we'll all be reunited in what is very much our new home. I wanted to just take the opportunity tonight to, to introduce myself, um, but also outline some of my key priorities. 
Um, and as Bridget said, uh, almost uh, a year and just a little bit more to the day ago, I was Premier of Tasmania. Um, and I'm very proud of the fact that we took uh, one small state of Australia from having the slowest economy in the country to the fastest growing. Um, and Tasmania, for those of you who, uh, who know of it and perhaps may have visited, um, it's a very special place, but it is indeed Australia's smallest state, an island state, uh, but uh, a beautiful place to live and work. But after nearly 18 years um, in Tasmania's parliament and as six as leader of the government, um, I thought it was time for a career change. Uh, at 51, I feel I've got at least one or two more careers left in me. And so in January of last year, I wondered uh, what opportunities might present. And many people told me that the world was my oyster, that there'd be enormous opportunities in Tasmania, perhaps in the States, across Australia, or even abroad. Um, then perhaps two weeks later, we started to learn more about a pandemic that was sweeping its way across China and uh, parts of the Northern Hemisphere. Um, only a few months later, of course, it had descended upon all of us. It was not a good time to be looking for work. Uh, but I was lucky enough to secure a role chairing and establishing what uh, is a newly formed entity called the Australian Business Growth Fund, a collaboration of Australia's major banks, um, all of which are represented here, of course, in, uh, in Singapore, uh, and the Commonwealth Government. It was designed and planned to support uh, new businesses to provide them with with, uh, with capital um, and for the, the business growth fund to take an equity share and allow that business the opportunity and the support to grow. Um, I literally set that up as the incoming inaugural chair and CEO uh, executive uh, and uh, it was a wonderful opportunity for me to work in the private sector but not a great time to be setting a business growth fund up when the world's economy was in recession um, the country was in lockdown, as indeed was most of the world, um, and many small businesses were struggling to survive, uh, let alone grow. Uh, but ultimately, uh, Australia's Prime Minister also thought that a good use of my time um, and expertise and skills might be in serving our nation's interests abroad. And it's something that I and my English-born wife have often felt we would like to do, notwithstanding the difficulties of the times, uh, the limitations on travel, the disruption that it would cause to our family, the opportunity to serve Australia in what I consider to be a dream job here in Singapore, uh, despite the night, nightmare year that we're all living in, uh, was an opportunity that I was not prepared to let pass. Um, so two months ago, we arrived in Singapore um, and uh, as, uh, as Secretary Bridget has said, uh, I presented credentials to the President just over a month ago um, and I've hit the ground running. We love this place. I'm so excited to be here, filled with enthusiasm, um, but very conscious of the fact too that I join a community that, like in Australia, has been very well protected from the ravages of COVID, uh, very well protected by good government policy and systems, uh, but has still suffered um, considerably through the lack of us being able to get together. And this is the first time I've spoken with a Rotary Club uh, and many times I've done it, but I've had to do so in such a fashion. Uh, but it's something that we're all enduring. But needless to say, I've got many uh, plans while I'm here. And uh, my mission, of course, is, is first and foremost to represent Australia's interests, um, to do all I can to support my nation and its people um, and I do so as a member of the Singapore community um, to do all I can living here and working in a place that is is trusted, well respected, highly regarded by Australians in which our governments and indeed many corporate entities have long-standing um, and very valued relationships. Um, so my role is to support Australians here um, and also to advise back home by further building on that important relationship um, and taking it to the next level. What that means is first and foremost dealing with the challenges of COVID. Our 
governments and uh, indeed the Singapore government's number one objective is to keep people safe and both countries have a tremendous record of success in that regard. We of course acknowledge that people have lost their lives and it's had a, an enormous impact on uh, people in uh, Australia and Singapore and those working at the front line to keep us safe. Uh, but our track records are amongst, if not the best, in the world. Um, Australians, obviously, are first and foremost in front of mind for the Australian government, uh, but those Australians abroad, particularly those intending and hoping to return home uh, now and as they've done in the past in their thousands, are also a critical priority for the government and for us as consular officials here in Singapore. Um, and we're still needing to provide on a daily basis consular support and assistance for those in need wanting to return or those who are suffering considerable stress, uh, whether it be through separation from loved ones, dislocation from their principal place of work, financial pressures, and of course, mental health issues that come with uh, such social dislocation and the uncertainty about what the future holds. My priorities in so far as what we can do to strengthen our relationship and life is going on, of course, and not only has there been a tremendous negative impact, there are also enormous opportunities as the world adapts and as markets start diversify. So front and centre, of course, off the back of what is our sixth largest trading partner and sixth largest investment uh, country of origin, Singapore into Australia, uh, a place that uh, relies heavily on trade and exports itself. Um, we have very much um, aligned interests in Australia and Singapore being part of an open global economic community, as difficult as it now is. Companies are needing to diversify, to adapt, and there are enormous opportunities that are emerging uh, from this crisis, including in the digital economy. And we're now, of course, all meeting digitally, a lot more work will now be done in that sphere. And Australia and Singapore have struck last year what is a world leading digital economy agreement, the, the best of its kind in the world, one of the first. Uh, my job, having in inherited the enormous amount of work that's been done by both governments and officials, is to implement it and execute it. But that's a key part of what we intend to do this year. So that trade and business is simpler, uh, less encumbered, uh, that there are adequate consumer protections and data protections in place and we adapt using new and innovative technologies and artificial intelligence uh, to equip us better for a post-COVID recovery and indeed to deal with what are very new economic trade conditions uh, now. And there are many businesses indeed that uh, will benefit from that and that will support, most importantly, jobs and investment here in Singapore and importantly uh, back in Australia as well. There are a number of key sectors as well where Australia's interests and agenda aligns beautifully with that of Singapore in sustainability, whether it be through renewable energy and Australia has plans to export its renewable energy capacity. And I come from a state that is one of the few places in the world that was 100% renewable and net emissions free and I'm fully aware and and very excited by the opportunities for Australia to export solar, um, as it's proposed we may do across a, a, a 3,000 kilometre cable or thereabouts to Singapore or to export hydrogen uh, from Western Australia. But in addition to major projects such as those, there's an ability for Singapore and Australia to share knowledge uh, and skills and capacity with respect to emissions reduction um, to renewable energy trading mechanisms and to supporting businesses here, um, consumers, our, our neighbours in region, in uh, uh, neighbouring uh, countries rather, in the region to improve uh, their uh, business and industry base and to ensure that uh, our globe's climate uh, and environmental condition is improved. So that's important. There are also other areas of, of great interest to me uh, where Australia's interests align with, uh, with Singapore's agenda, whether it be through food security, science and innovation, education, which is being terribly disrupted now by COVID and the inability of, of students to travel the world. And Australia, of course, is a major exporter of international uh, education. 
both uh, at a student, uh, school student, also tertiary and, and university level. Um, so we need to address that. Uh, and there are also uh, important relationships between Australia and Singapore, our interpersonal connections, uh, whether it be through our defence and security networks, uh, which have a long-standing, uh, rich and very valued past, but also the future opportunities for defence-based industries, advanced manufacturing um, and the sharing of knowledge, intelligence and a capability not only to ensure our communities in which we live uh, and for those for which we serve, but also the broader region is safe and secure. So in addition to dealing with the COVID challenge, to supporting trade, business and investment in a new economic uh, climate and under very difficult uh, but, um, and challenging but potentially opportunistic uh, circumstances, the third and final uh, of my priorities is to ensure that we, we benefit from this enormous advantage we have of being trusted, reliable partners, Australia and Singapore, very much like-minded, sharing similar objectives, both uh, with many advantages, but also appreciating that uh, we need to adapt, we need to be relevant in the global community, uh, and that can not only be done by working closely together bilaterally, but also expanding our multilateral reach. Singapore is a trusted partner in this region, ASEAN, uh, and will also assist us in ensuring that our trade, our commerce, and, and our relationships across the globe uh, in a positive condition um, and supportive to uh, not only economic and trade um, advantages, but also ensuring that uh, our communities, wherever it is we live, um, are prosperous, are safe um, and positive about the future, uh, despite all the conditions in which uh, we've endured over the last year. Um, I remain eternally optimistic. Um, I believe that this post that I've been so fortunate enough and this honour and responsibility that I've been given um, is one that I intend to grasp uh, with both hands. My prime responsibility, of course, is to the, uh, the nation of Australia and its people, but that also includes those who are here, those who work here, those businesses that are based here, and those who have an interest um, in both the, the progress, prosperity, safety, security and stability of both our countries, um, and that includes the very warm, welcoming, um, engaging uh, people that I've met here in Singapore, those Singaporean nationals who've made me, my wife Nikki, uh, my daughter Lily, um, and those who I work with uh, feel most welcomed, uh, very well supported. I'm fortunate to arrive in a country uh, that similarly is is well cared for, safe um, and secure and has COVID under control. That may change swiftly and, of course, we're all doing what we can to ensure that that not uh, be a problem we have to contend with. Um, the ability for us all to travel is another key point of interest I appreciate. Um, and as I've said to many people, uh, I'm not loving the fact that I'm not able to get back to Australia soon and I'm sure most people are not loving the fact that we can't visit the region or indeed further abroad as we've so easily done in the past. But I'm loving the fact uh, that I'm able to live in a place like Singapore, a remarkable, beautiful, uh, invigorating place in which to work to start that next career. Um, and most importantly, as I hope to do, uh, to advance Australia's interest and that is Singapore as much as I can and uh, most importantly also be part of this community in which I now live. Um, and there's no better place that, to be starting than uh, through its Rotary Club. So thank you so much for the invitation to be with you tonight. I look forward to um, answering your questions, taking feedback and hopefully uh, meeting you all in person in due course. President, you need to unmute yourself. Dinesh, please. Oh. Thank you, Excellency, for your speech. And before I hand over to Bridget for question and answer, I, uh, I'll have a question from me. What do you see are the opportunities post-COVID or as a result of COVID in the relationship of Singapore and Australia? And I, I think I've, I've touched on a few, of course. Um, most uh, pressingly, in addition to uh, ensuring the safety and the good care, health care of uh, our citizens here and uh, in Australia, 
I think there's enormous opportunity to collaborate on travel, mm. uh, opening up potentially green lanes. A lot of work is being done as we speak. That will have enormous, enormous economic benefits, but also, I think, demonstrate to the rest of the world uh, once we have the systems in place uh, that we can continue to, to travel, uh, to trade, to operate commercially um, in a more familiar and open environment. Uh, there are also very important connections uh, between our, our business uh, and industry communities. And I, I think most pertinently, as I've said, in, in the digital economy, um, in renewable energy and sustainability and reducing emissions and uh, improving our climate change policy settings, uh, Australia and Singapore have now struck a, a new memorandum of understanding to, to work uh, in this area, and as we have indeed under our digital economy um, agreement. And also in providing food security, I think uh, one of the success stories of, uh, of the COVID, COVID pandemic uh, and the shutdown in both our countries was the way in which Australia was able to support its government to subsidise uh, the export of Australian produce to Singapore, which was suddenly confronted with a very real food security issue. Australia has and still continues to provide um, access to many of our uh, fine quality, highly regarded and in demand products, whether it be in our, our meat sector or our dairy sectors from Australia, exporting it um, into Singapore and this region more broadly. So as we look towards sustainability uh, and the ability for Singapore to meet its objective to be more self-sufficient in producing renewable energy or indeed uh, its own food um, supply and source, then Australia has an enormous opportunity there. Um, international education is so important, not only for the students concerned, uh, but also to ensure our, our interpersonal connections, our cultural links are uh, maintained. And Australia and Singapore have extraordinary connections in that regard, um, many of which may not be suitable to the future uh, and future needs. We need to adapt and ensure that not only is a good educational product being provided, but we look at new ways in which um, it can be provided. Um, but also to, uh, to make sure that the connections between government and those educational institutions uh, are rich and vibrant and not um, in any way uh, disadvantaged by the current difficult circumstances in which we, we, uh, we are all living and working. So that's another a key area of opportunity, but also, in my view, a key area of need and priority that we need to be mindful of and working on uh, because the future will look very different from what it uh, has in the past, of course. Uh, those who work in education, science, research and innovation, and there are so many here in Singapore doing that, will help, um, I'm sure, lead our agenda in this area. Thank you. Over to Bridget. I think we have limited time. Maybe another one or two <laughs> questions. Always, yeah. I'll try and keep my answers short, so I apologise. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, do we have any other burning questions from the floor? Anyone? I don't see any. I'm used to answering lots of questions um, from There's my days in, in uh, Parliament. So. We have Ranga. Ranga, do you have a question? Yes, hi. Uh, is there any insights on when a travel bubble between Singapore and uh, Australia will be set up? Yeah, and that, that's a great question and one that uh, we're being asked often. Um, and again, I want to preface my comments by saying and I've come from a place, uh, Tasmania, which I think could well argue to be um, the safest, uh, the, the freest community in which you could now live in terms of movement, uh, restrictions or lack thereof, other than an occasional in inability to travel interstate to mainland Australia and, of course, overseas. Um, I've been fortunate enough to live in a community uh, that has been very lucky and where it's almost felt like it's life as, as usual. But when I came here, uh, what did occur to me is that many people are not only feeling um, 
a sense of cabin fever, and I understand that's not uncommon here in Singapore, that there's a desire to occasionally get off the island, uh, explore the region. I can understand that. Uh, but many people uh, quite seriously are also needing to travel for, as I said in my opening remarks, not only for work um, and for uh, their, their personal uh, career or uh, any organisational requirements, but uh, for their own well-being. Um, and uh, it's important, in my view, that we do all we can to give some sense to our communities as to when travel might, might open up again. So it is the number one priority for me and the mission here, uh, and that includes working very, very closely with the Singaporean authorities. Um, and as recent as yesterday and today, I've met with uh, ministers here in Singapore as part of our my introductions, but also to talk to them, as we are with uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, the Minister of, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and indeed the counterpart agencies in Australia, to ensure that what are clearly two of the best placed countries in the world, Australia and Singapore, able to uh, open up travel arrangements and to establish green lanes to utilise uh, forums, international forums, which uh, will take place this year. And I think of the World Economic Forum, for instance, or the Shangri-La Dialogue, uh, two events which are planned to continue as expected. Um, there, are, there are enormous opportunities for us to work together to build our capabilities, to share data, to understand what technical uh, requirements are expected of, of us, our health departments, but also uh, our people to provide them with confidence uh, that so we're able to travel um, and to ensure that there's an understanding of uh, what vaccines here and indeed in Australia, uh, how they might be recognised and certified in either country, noting, of course, that they don't necessarily align. There's a lot of work, I guess, uh, what I'm, is what I'm saying, that's uh, underway to, as quickly as we can, ensure that uh, green lane, a green lane between Australia and Singapore can open up as soon as possible. And I think those, those events, those conferences that I spoke about will be a very important pilot, uh, a test bed for the things of which I speak. Um, and uh, I'm sure and I hope they expect that they will be a success. Um, there's obviously uh, many, many elements here that we need to ensure uh, are properly at attended to um, so that uh, people are safe. Uh, but there's a very clear commitment by both governments to, to proceed with this work uh, and to ensure that travel can open as soon as possible. Um, and I can't be more definitive than that. The Australian government has a, a very clear priority that first and foremost is the safety uh, of those resident in Australia now, um, that domestic travel is now possible in Australia, um, and that is a priority ahead of international travel. Uh, but a lot of work's being done um, also between not only governments but other key partners like Singapore Airlines, for instance, with whom I met uh, recently as well, to, to keep working um, on opening those international links, at least with Australia. And, of course, Singapore has, uh, has commitments and plans in place with respect to other neighbouring countries as well, which um, uh, I also hope uh, are able to, to come to fruition sooner rather than later. But... It is our number one priority or, you know, amongst uh, those that I've mentioned, keeping Australians and Singaporeans safe. I have Thank a very, very quick add-on question. Do you think we will get a vaccine passport or something? Uh, yeah, and that's, that's important. And um, we need to, as I say, get some mutual recognition of uh, the vaccines that are being distributed now in Australia, uh, the, those that... Uh, have been distributed here in Singapore and indeed globally. It'll be important to get mutual recognition, certification, verification of, uh, of all those, uh, the, those vaccines and where um, the, the regulators in, in countries across the world have approved them. Um, so that, that will need to happen. Um, and it begs the question, of course, of how much of that can be done unilaterally or multilaterally um, and how much we can do uh, bilaterally. 
Australia and Singapore. And, uh, of course, um, that's not my sole focus in this regard now, but needless to say, being here in this role and with that opportunity that I think presents us um, is worthy of, uh, of our full attention. So it's something that our respective health agencies are working on. The Singaporean government has been very responsive in providing information and data to Australia. Of course, you'd be aware that um, Singapore provided Australia with some uh, 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 the opportunity to utilise technology for tracing and tracking yeah. in Australia. Uh, Singapore Airlines flew the first batch of vaccines into Australia. We've provided uh, direct support into Singapore uh, with, uh, with products that um, the, this country has needed. Uh, so there's been a, a tremendous collaboration already. Australia is also rolling out a massive program across the region in the Pacific um, to uh, support neighbouring countries as well. Uh, we've, uh, we've purchased enough vaccine to uh, vaccinate the entire Pacific region if required, and it shows an enormous commitment by the Australian government to ensure that um, more broadly uh, people are getting vaccinated as quickly as possible. So it's all hands on on deck, I can assure you, uh, government's moving uh, at a very fast pace to collaborate, to share information. Uh, but you're right, it, uh, to answer your question, we will need to align all we're doing. Um, we'll need to ensure that uh, our communities here uh, and in Australia are confident that um, there is no increased risk by allowing travel to, to open up. Uh, but we're making, in my view, great strides to that goal. Thank you. Thank you. May I now call upon past President Mark, Mark Wong to give a word of thanks, please. PP Mark. Yes. Uh, thank you, President Dinesh, for the opportunity. Uh, I would like to, on behalf of our entire club, uh, thank our special guest today, uh, His Excellency William Hodgman, for his insightful speech. I have personally traveled to Australia many, many times, especially when I was working for uh, in Asia Pacific sense. And only now did I hear, understand every word of Australian that I heard. <laughs> when I was doing a business review, some words I just couldn't understand. But I think I speak for all of us at Rotary Club of Singapore. Uh, we thank you for your updates and insights and the, your, your priorities. I think as ambassador, of course, uh, like you said, you must uh, advance uh, and represent Australian effort, but I think uh, your insight into how we can promote uh, business, uh, trade and investment, and especially not forgetting the social causes that we are all in together. So I think we're in good hands to have you here. So lastly, I just want to welcome you uh, coming from uh, one big island to this small island <laughs> and best wishes for a very fruitful tour of duty uh, for yourself and for I believe Mickey and Lily. So yes. uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Can we all unmute ourselves and give a round of applause to our speaker? Do excellent. Thank you very much. Thank thank you. You. Oh, we can have direct flights from Singapore to Hobart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In my old job, I was hoping we'd be able to establish a direct link between us between Singapore and and Tasmania. We nearly got there. It's going to be tough for a while, but yes, I, I'll continue on that mission. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Uh, next week. We're always proud of uh, Tasmania's flag being kept held high by David Boone when he used to play for Australia. So Yes. I know David Boone very well, as I do, do uh, indeed know, um, and even perhaps more famous or well um, Known cricketer uh, Ricky Ponting, who um, yeah, exactly. And I hope to. We have it. Sh I shouldn't digress, but there's a Singapore um, national playing for the Hobart Hurricanes, my BBL team in Tasmania, and I'm hoping when things open up uh, to to bring him and perhaps that team to Singapore to play cricket and advance our cultural connections um, awesome. through that wonderful sport here. I think we can continue this interesting topic yes. during the fellowship. Uh, all right, the next week's speaker, Mr. Collins Downey, Sales Partnership Director, Wild Heart Group. The topic, global social impact of Wild Heart Group. Before I close, I think I have to go back uh, to the early announcement about the, the uh, new 
uh, president elect uh, now that is not we have to move further and uh, i i did it purposely that i'll come back to this a little later because there was so much enthusiasm that time in supporting our new president elect so the board has uh, passed another resolution for president that is myself to form a nominating committee to select a nominating nominate select and nominate president nominee to fill the position vacated by president elect louis lim so we have to find his successor as soon as possible so i would reinstate the uh, the nominating committee which selected him and it was dissolved automatically uh, after the agm in december so there are four members uh, past president stan past president mohan past president chiniap and past president tapan and we'll add now president elect louis lim on the committee and of course ipp and myself that was one and second i think i would uh, just uh, ask our president elect to nominate his board as soon as possible thank you thank president you. thank you and with us i would like to thank everyone for attending this meeting finding your time especially our guests prospective members and i hope you had you enjoyed attending our meeting and please come back again thank you so much and with that i would close the meeting thank you president thank you thank you president you can